the saying goes that we are what we eat. And the, the kind of the surface level understanding of that is that we are physically composed of the molecules that we consume. But I think that we can actually take a larger lens to understand that idea. And that is who and what we are as a species is the result of the interplay between our diet and our habitat. So I wanna, I wanna take a look back and get to where, where this idea comes from. Big step back. Let's go back 1.9 million years. Uh, and 1.9 million years ago, humans are early hominids, not so different from our chimp cousins. And we're eating a diet that is very similar to what our chimp cousins eat. We're eating a lot of very fibrous fruits. And these fruits are uh, very high in micronutrients, in vitamins, in minerals, and antioxidants. Uh, but beca because they're so fibrous, uh, they're not very calorie dense, and they're very hard to chew, and they're very hard to digest. And so then we do something extraordinary. We discover barbecue. Um, which is actually, not to be facetious, but it's, it's kind of two innovations. Uh, the first is that we start eating meat. And when we start eating meat, we have a more calorie dense, a more macronutrient dense. So macronutrients, I'm talking about fat, carbohydrates, and protein. So meat introduces a high level of fats and proteins to our diet. And now we have a, this, this nutrient source that we've never had before. Uh, and then something else happens, and, and the second innovation is the one that changes the course of our species, that changes the, the course of history of our planet, and that is that we start cooking our food. And when we start cooking our food, it effectively pre-processes it. It starts breaking it down, and when it breaks it down, we spend a lot less time chewing. And before this, we had been spending 50% of our day chewing, and now we start cooking our food, and we spend 5% of our day chewing. And so all of a sudden, we have a new nutrient source that's giving us more nutrition, more, more macronutrients, more calories than we've ever had before. Uh, and we're getting them faster and with far greater efficiency than we've ever gotten before. Because not only does the food start to break down mechanically when you start cooking it, but it also starts to break down on a molecular level. And your digestive system gets a lot more efficient. And so our gut actually gets shorter. And the cells in the gut, the tissue in our gut, is the second most energy hungry in the human body, second only to the brain. And so with the shorter gut, with more food, and with more energy dense food than we've ever had before, we can invest all of that energy in our brain. And our brain gets 50% larger, we become homo erectus, and we evolve. Now fast forward another 1.8 million years, so we're 100,000 years ago, homo erectus again discovers a new food source. We start eating cereal grains. And when we add cereal grains to our diet of cooked meat and cooked fruits, we have a food supply that lasts uh, for a longer part of the year. We get over the, the seasonality hump. Um, and again, we evolve as a species. We evolve from Homo erectus to Homo sapiens. Now again, fast forward 10,000 years ago. And 10,000 years ago, we start farming for the first time. And we start farming just a couple of cereal grains, and we start farming a couple of animals, but it give, and so we're not, we're not great at farming, but, but we're producing more calories, more macronutrients than we ever have before. And with that, the farming population explodes. We create the first permanent settlements, uh, and farmers start reproducing at a rate 50% faster than foragers. Uh, and as a result of that, the where and how we live, our social group structure totally changes. At this point, 10,000 years ago, living at the moment in history when we have more calories, more macronutrients than we've ever had before, two remarkable things happen to our species. We actually start getting smaller as a species, where for the past four or five million years of hominid development, we had actually been getting sub significantly taller. And the second thing that happens is that we actually start experiencing developmental delays. So that giant brain that we've now evolved that is three times larger than it was four or five million years ago really isn't doing so hot. And so what we, what we see when we look back at history is that this is the first moment when we are overfed and undernourished. We have more calories, more macronutrients than ever, and yet we have neglected the micronutrients that we had early in our development. So now fast forward another 10,000 years, uh, and we're in 1790. And in 1790, 90% of the American population is still involved in farming. And over the past 10,000 years, we've gotten a lot better at farming. And we're farming more things, both in terms of diversity and more things in terms of uh, volume than we ever have before. But over 200 years, from 1790 to 1990, another remarkable thing happens we will drop from 90% of the American population being involved in farm labor 
to 2.6%. And for reference, we're a similar rate today, about 2% about of the American population. And so while it took us millions of years of evolution to go from being foragers to hunters, uh, and another nearly 2 million years to go from hunters to farmers, and it took us another 10,000 years to get really good at farming, within 200 years, we move from an agrarian species to now a market or commodity-based diet species. And this has huge implications, some very good and, and some uh, questionable. So the, the first thing, the thing that we're doing really, really well is again, we're, we're really good at transporting macronutrients. We're really good at transporting calories. And there are today, for, for the average individual living in sub-Saharan Africa, there are 2,400 calories per day available for him. That's more than the global average was 50 years ago. And that's extraordinary, and it's worth recognizing that accomplishment. But at the same time, because we've invested in this hard commodity-based uh, food, food system, we've tried to force the soft commodities, the fruits and vegetables, the things that give us all of those micronutrients, all of the vitamins, the minerals, and the antioxidants into that same system. And it hasn't worked very well. Uh, the saying goes that we, we now grow for transportation rather than for consumption, and it's very true. A fruit or vegetable today has 90% fewer micronutrients than it had 100 years ago. And so, as we think about the future and the, the future of our food supply, it's not the macronutrients, it's not the calories that really concern me. We have shown as a species to be adept at increasing our supply of macronutrients and showing that we can evolve as a result of that. What we have never done in the history of our species is improve our ability to grow micronutrients. And that is concerning. And so I think if we're going to, to figure out how to grow micronutrients within the commodity or market-based food system that we have today, we need a new type of infrastructure. And so this infrastructure, I've spent a, you know, a long time thinking about this, uh, and there are a lot of really smart people thinking about this, and, and it's my thesis that this it will exist within a space called indoor agriculture. Uh, so indoor agriculture kind of has an interesting connotation. It echoes uh, factory farm. But what factory farming really implies is taking a pristine piece of natural land, industrializing it, and destroying it with, with chemicals and with tractors. But what if you flip that model on its head? What if you build a farm inside a factory? And that's exactly what, what indoor agriculture allows us to do. So I am the CEO of a company called Edenworks, and we develop indoor agriculture technology, and then we operate those farms. Uh, and it's not just a farm. We build thriving ecosystems inside of warehouses. Uh, so we use a technology called aquaponics. We grow fish, and as the fish produce waste, produce manure, we break all of that down using the, the same bacteria that you find in the soil. Um, and that bacteria transforms the fish waste and makes it accessible for plants. And then we grow edible plants. The plants absorb all of that manure from their ecosystem. Uh, and then we send back the clean water to the fish. And so with this model, we're not just producing clean protein, which is certainly important, but it is a way to grow micronutrients in an unprecedented way within the habitat that we now live in, which is cities. And so this, this model can be applied to all of, this, all of the different fresh fruits and vegetables that we should be growing and eating. And so at the moment, uh, Edenworks is very focused on salads. And so instead of growing traditional salad greens, we grow microgreens. And those microgreens are 40 times more nutrient dense than traditional mature salad greens. And the same model could be applied to, uh, to strawberries or tomatoes, to all of those different, uh, different fruits and vegetables that we should be eating fresh. And so to come back to, to the idea that we started with, we know based on history, what happens when we invest in the different parts of our diet. There's kind of a Moore's law of like diet and evolution. We figured out micronutrients early on, and then we invested in calories, and we thrived. And then we doubled down on calories, on macronutrients, and we experienced, on the one hand, population boom, but uh, a fitness bust. And now, uh, we're at this moment in history where calories, where macronutrients are more abundant than at any moment in history. 
And, and we look back and we see the echoes of what we experienced 10,000 years ago. We have metabolic diseases, we have obesity, diabetes. We actually, uh, in the same way that we got shorter, our life expectancy today is shorter than the life expectancy of our parents' generation. And so we have a choice. We have this awareness and this choice that we've never had before. We can choose to double down. We can choose to double down on the macronutrients, on calories, um, and become like the corn species. Uh, and that's an option. Um, but, but we can also choose to invest in diversity, in the diversification of our diet, and see where the investment in that diversification can take us as a species. Thank you.